Here we go again. Lakeside Boys TV proudly presents The Road to Russia, supporting Canada's men's national team. I'm Jason Armand, and this is LSB TV. Time to support national football. Previously on LSB TV, we did the math regarding Canada's chances to progress past round four of World Cup qualifying, focusing on the pivotal game against Honduras on September 2nd. What this means is that a win on Friday puts us in round five, a loss takes us out of the competition, and a draw postpones this decision until the El Salvador game at BC Place on September 6th. Again, that's assuming that a major upset doesn't occur and someone actually beats Mexico. So, here we are, the most important game of the year. Canada versus Honduras in Honduras. If we win, we're pretty much through. If we tie, pretty good chance. If we lose, another four years of frickin' agony. Welcome to the life of a Canadian soccer fan. <laughs> time in the first half and they just even the score won all. During the break at the half, Delphine Straith agreed to sit down for an interview. Delphine is the mother of Adam Straith, who was subbed onto the pitch in the 64th minute of the game we were currently watching. And you're here to watch him play? Yes. So you're, hope, you're hoping he gets on the field against Honduras? We kind of didn't think that he was really going to play. Yeah. So anyway, but he's on the bench if they need him. And you're of course going to be going across the BC Place yes, soon? Yes, most definitely. And uh, looking forward to seeing him play? Yes, 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 always. Always? Yeah. And uh, so what do you think is going to happen today in this match? Right now Honduras is 1-1 one, one, one all? It's, it's tough. It's tense. At the moment, it's 12 corners to two. That's a little sketchy, but that's okay. If we can play it, I mean, Boyan is playing amazing. He's just amazing out there, and we just have to stay strong, boys. Stay strong, and that's pretty much it. Go Canada. <laughs> And in a perfect world, what's going to happen on Tuesday? Well, we will definitely beat El Salvador. I think we'll give them a little bit of a walloping because we'll have a, a good fan base and tell everybody to come out. And we'll, we'll, be, we'll be strong. I'm dreaming of it. In the end, Canada lost to Honduras 2-1, which, according to our math, means Canada had almost no chance of heading to the World Cup, though some still thought positively about our chances. If we lose by one goal, if we lose by one goal, we need to overturn a goal different. We need to a, a five goal swing in goal differential on the last game day. So Mexico wins four nil. We win one nil. We're golden. Actually, if we've scored that first goal, yeah, we or the, even that second chance, good chance we had. Totally different game. <laughs> totally different game. You're not going to stop us. We're going to BC Place, and we're going to win by a combined margin of six goals to advance <laughs> Honduras. Yes, to progress past this stage, Canada needed a win at BC Place and somehow make up a six-goal difference, assuming Honduras loses to Mexico. It was with this slim hope that we began our journey to Vancouver, stopping first at the most Canadian place I could think of. We are about to get on the bus for Vancouver. We're heading to Canada versus El Salvador. This is gonna be epic. But right now, we just wanna to get to Vancouver because it's early in the morning and it's looking kinda of crappy here. Yeah, we're doing it.
of ten. We made it. What do you think? I think this is going to be great. We have the best room right across from BC Place. This is going to be fantastic. We can see what's going on. The action will be here. Easy stumbling distance after the game. Here we are at beautiful BC Place, downtown Vancouver, ready for El Salvador versus Canada tomorrow night. It's going to be a fantastic game. We're going to win, but can we win by enough goals? That's the big question. We'll find out tomorrow. After a few pre-drinking drinks, we met up with the Voyageurs over at the Yale Town Brewing Company. We get big groups and I don't care if they're adding people. I'm oh, talking about the people who like yeah. call sure. and have never heard of them before. Yeah, I think it was the day after I put in my order. I'm like, oh, he's like, oh yeah, I'll take four. The following day gave us the opportunity for some tourism, so we headed over to the Vancouver Aquarium. Game day and the weather's looking great. We are fast approaching Duelins. It's time for the pre-match gathering. I went to a game. I went to a game once. This is Lakeside Boys Television at Duelins Pub. We're at the match right before the Canada El Salvador game, and we are joined as always by loyal voyageurs who also happen to be Calgary's Foothill supporters. Let's introduce them. Yay. And what's your name? Nicholas. And? Matthew. And? Maria. And you guys have come all the way from Calgary to watch this game, right? Yes. Yeah, we have. Yeah. What's, the, what's the score going to be today? Canada 5, El Salvador now. Yes! That's the way it is. Canada soccer, one, one game, one country, we're all united. Right on! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Why are we laughing? Hey Ted! Hey! What are we doing? We're about to march. We're getting ready to go leave from Doolin's for the stadium. The Canadian supporters are gathering and here we go! Whoa.
So here we are. The game's over. As you can hear from my voice, I'm a little hoarse. Jason and I stood in the stands the entire 90 minutes and sang our hearts out with the Voyageurs. And we got a 3-1 win. On any other night, that'd be fantastic. 3-1 at home. What a great win. Unfortunately, thanks to Mexico rolling over and taking it up the, <clears throat> well, excuse me, in Honduras, from Honduras, pardon me, at Azteca, they got a tie game. So no matter what we did tonight, it was meaningless. We're out of the World Cup qualifying for 2018. We're done. I thought the lads did a great job on the, on the pitch. It was wonderful. I, they tried. They had lots of chances. The Salvadorans were diving like an Olympic swimming team. What more can you say except as we started singing after the final whistle blew, we're going to Qatar. We're going, going to, to Qatar. Qatar. You won't believe us. I know you won't believe us. I know you won't believe us. We're going to Qatar. That's all. Before the final match, one of my fellow supporters, perhaps sensing the hopelessness of our cause, reminded us that we shouldn't base our lives on what 11 men in matching polyester shirts playing a kid's game do. I'll admit, I laughed at that. And yet, after our bittersweet victory, it still stung knowing Canada's long road to Russia had come to an abrupt end. Being a supporter had to have meant more than chanting, screaming, or drumming at 11 men in matching polyester shirts. Something about the game is magical, the way it transcends borders and boundaries and language. It pits nation against nation and somehow brings us together in doing so. International football is the continuation of war by other means, George Orwell once said. It's hard to put into words what being a supporter means to us. Perhaps J.B. Priestley said it best. To say that these men paid their shillings to watch 22 hirelings kick a ball is merely to say that a violin is wood and catgut, and that Hamlet is so much paper and ink. Next time, Canada. Next time.